All right, everybody, Bob Chick along with David Bay. We're here in Miami at the National Championships 2014 edition. And, David, we are not lacking in competitors. 960-something competitors, just under 1,000. Oh, I, 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 I thought there was a little bit more than 1,000 in any regard. A lot of competitors, uh, about six hours of prejudging just for men's bodybuilding alone. They started women's physique, and we got bikini coming up later, but wanting to do the wrap-up video for, uh, for men's bodybuilding. Well, they bring out all the judges for this one, so they, they've got 40-plus judges. They're rotating in and out, so none of them are getting buried in there for hours. So I tell you, that's a job I wouldn't want. But um, you know what? We saw probably the best caliber of competition that we've seen at the Nationals in probably the last three, four years, uh, especially in the heavier weight classes. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but they started things off uh, this afternoon with Bantamweights, uh, moving right up, obviously, to Super Heavyweights. What do you got in the Bantams? Uh, Bantamweights was a really good, uh, I, I want to say, two-person show uh, between Robert Freeman and James Shumpert. Uh, you know, the, the Bantamweight class is always a little bit interesting. You know, you never really anybody that big, but there's still impressive physiques there, uh, you know, so... Uh, I think that's going to probably be your clear one and two for your pro card winners uh, tomorrow are, are, are Robert and James. Uh, a lot of muscle for a little frame and both brought really good conditioning. And it's top two here at the Nationals. So obviously that second place uh, finish, very important obviously for somebody to get their pro card. Moving on to the lightweights. Uh, lightweights, not quite as competitive as, as I think the bantamweights. There are some good guys. Um, looks like it's going to be between Eric Hernandez and uh, Terrence Ruffin. Um, a couple other guys, Kelly Bautista, he's been on the top, you know, top spot a few times at Nationals. But a good lightweight class, again, you know, good conditioning, which you expect to see out of the lighter weights. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it's funny. You see some of these guys in the lobby and you're doing interviews and you stand next to them and they, they just look like this and they get on stage and, you know, really good physiques. So. The illusion of bodybuilding purely because, yeah, you'll stand next to some of these guys and they're, you know, they're this big. Uh, but, you know, those sweats come off and these guys are put together. Uh, moving into our... Welterweights before the middles. Yeah, welterweight. This was the first class, and where somebody came out on stage and really just grabbed my attention. A uh, kid we did an interview with last night, uh, Santiago Aragon, goes by Santi. Um, really impressive legs for a welterweight. His conditioning was spot on. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say yes. He had striated glutes, I mean, his back shots, everything. Could probably be a little bit thicker in the chest, maybe. Um, but well, the he, cool thing is, is this is one of those rare instances where, now, he actually had some picks up on MD uh, throughout the week. Looked great. But, you know, we've seen that before, and then you get here, and you're like, geez, what happened to this guy, man? I mean, he looked great throughout the week. Um, he actually brought it. I mean, he actually looked even a little bit better than he did in the picks. Yeah, he really nailed it. Uh, as far as conditioning, uh, the two other guys in the top three, uh, Armando Aman, you know, probably the biggest guy in the class, not quite as sharp as uh, Sonny, though. And Denver Smith, uh, you know, Denver was another one of those guys, posted a lot of pictures leading up to the show. Conditioning looked really good. Sometimes you, you set yourself up for disappointment when you, when you focus too much on that. Uh, but Denver's conditioning was actually probably better today than I've seen it in the pictures. So he really nailed it. Uh, if I had to pick one and two, I'd say Santi and Denver. Uh, but Armando's got good size, so it could be... You know, he, he could sneak into that second spot, but as far as a winner, I got Santiago hands down. All right, well, close enough that that's going to come down to the finals, I'm sure, tomorrow night. The judges always reserving decisions uh, for the night show, so they're not off the hook after the pre judging. Uh, you got to come back and you got to be in shape. I've actually seen that switch around where it's close. Uh, you know, sometimes it's not close and it's probably not going to switch. A lot of the classes are. Moving on to the middle weights. Now, this is traditionally one of the bigger classes and one of the most competitive, as, he, as these guys are right in that uh, 154 range. Yeah, you know, it was a, a pretty competitive class. Uh, we had uh, Robert Zavala, the guy who won the middleweights at North Americans, didn't get a pro card. They only give him away for the top three there. He was in the mix. Um, looks like your top two are going to be Tank Moore, a gentleman I'm not familiar with, but then also David Paterik. Uh, David had posted He's been a, around. Man. Yeah, David's been around. He posted a lot of pictures online leading up to the show. Another one of those guys uh, that looked really good as far as conditioning and brought it today. So um, I think you'll see, uh, you know, Jordan and David get their pro cards, but it, uh, a really close third. Robert looks, he's, he's very impressive. A real wide for a middleweight, which, uh, which isn't something you always see. No, that's for sure. Uh, but, yeah, he's been in the mix for a little while, so we'll see how that one uh, plays out tomorrow at the finals. Moving on and moving upwards, the light heavyweight division. Now, the caliber of competition this year, David, light heavy, heavy, and supers, definitely better than it's been. Um, and the numbers are up. Uh, there was almost, there was 200 and... 60 something bodybuilders in the show uh, that's up from a hundred and something last year so bodybuilding you know as everybody thinks is going away getting replaced by board shorts certainly not the case uh, and the caliber more importantly better we'll get into that as we go light heavyweight division 
Yeah, the light heavyweight division, uh, another one of these divisions where there wasn't really a lot of a lot of big names, nobody that that jumped out uh, when you're just looking at the list. Uh, you know, as far as the top three, a gentleman named Joseph Hubba, I'm not overly familiar with him. Looked pretty good though. Um, Freddie McRae and uh, Arthur Reed. Arthur we've definitely yeah, seen here Reed, before. Yeah. You know, one of these guys who's always in the top five. Um, Collegiate Nationals winner from last year, Lloyd Hereford. We thought he was going to be a light heavyweight. He dropped down to middles. They didn't have him in that first uh, that first call out originally, but they brought him out. He looks like he's going to be in that mix for the top five. And uh, Mitch Stats, really aesthetic kid from St. Louis, small waist, nice broad shoulders. So, again, not a lot of you know real big names. The the surprise to me in the light heavyweights, um, Kane Bishop, second guy that came out. Uh, he had some cramping issues after. Yeah. Really impressive physique. Uh, he looked like he was fading a little bit in prejudging. You well, know, he beat him up pretty good. Uh, head judge Steve Weinberger was mixing and matching. They were close, like I said. Nobody really came out and just kind of stood out above the rest. Uh, so he put those guys through probably four or five turns, and these guys are not used to that. I mean, you know, most of these guys coming from local, regional level, obviously, you're going to get you know one turn or two, you're done. Uh, so Steve definitely, you know, they're giving these guys a chance to compete, and he was very thorough in his callouts. Uh, we'll see how that light heavies uh, breaks up. I thought the class was generally decent, but I thought the heavyweights were actually in better shape. Yeah, the heavyweights was a was a really good class. So normally, as we move into the heavies and the supers, we see conditioning drop off a little bit. There were some really good super heavyweights. Um, it looks like uh, Alan Cool, uh, K U H L. I, I'm not even familiar with him. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's be a dick. Uh, they put him in the middle. You know, he was there the whole time. Had a really small waist, good quads, good physique. I mean, there were some other names that we've seen before. Uh, Jermaine Bell. Personally, I thought Jermaine was the front runner in that class. It was the best version of Jermaine we've seen. His back was really wide. His conditioning was really good. Um, he really nailed it. So I would like to see Jermaine getting a pro card. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, Benny Brantley. What you know? What can we say about Benny? I mean. He had the best physique there, but once again, missing the target by a lot. I mean, he, he was smooth. Uh, he still got the first call out, though, which was impressive. But that's how impressive he is physique wise. That kid's got all the tools, man, but he has got to find the combination. I mean, he looks like he was holding eight pounds of water. Yeah, he's, you know, he's not, you know, there's there's a lot of guys at the pro level we talk about, you know, Fred Smalls, uh, Lionel Bayecki, where these guys are pretty close, but they just need to ring it out a little bit more. Benny's, he's, he's not even there yet. He's just, he just screams potential. But realistically, you know, and I heard he was, you know, only in the, you know, 205, 206. So I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be dropping to light heavyweight. But yeah, uh, and, and if that number is correct, David, he should absolutely. He could have been five, six pounds down. Oh, yeah. And I tell you what, if he is, he's a contender, an instant contender in any class he's in. Yeah, I think he's a, I think he's a, a shoe in for a win if he shows up peeled. And he's one of these guys that can, if he ever gets his pro card, he can make an instant impact in the 212 division. But. It's, uh, it's, that's iffy. Uh, as far as the other heavyweights, um, Dominic Cardone, um, he was right up in the mix in the middle. It was it was uh, it was Jermaine and, and Dominic and, uh, and and Allen in the middle the whole time. So it's it's going to be interesting to see which way they go. Um, we also saw Sean Lindo, runner up at the USA's. Um, he's he's also going to be in that top mix. Mike, yeah, probably third, fourth. Yeah. Um, John Meadows got the first call. They called yeah, out six or they called it. It was a big first call out. They had a yeah, handful they, of guys out there. There was probably um, seven, eight guys out there for that first one, which tells you how close it is in terms of these guys are all similar. Absolutely. I like when they do that. I mean, traditionally you've seen calls of four, five guys potentially. Call out six, call out seven, or call out eight. Let these guys compete, and then as you see, people start getting moved around. Um, John Meadows, once again, one of the most conditioned guy in the show. Not the most aesthetically pleasing guy. I think you know John's the first guy to admit that. Right. Um, he brings a lot of quality muscle to that yeah. stage, but in this, you know, he's going to be on the outside looking in here. Yeah, John was, uh, you know, he's he's always in shape and he's always got freaky muscle. To me, he was a little bit better than he's even been in the past. Yeah. So as far as you know, John comparing himself to past versions of himself, he looked really good. But again, you know, they brought out five at the end. John wasn't in there. Um, Dave Rienza, another guy, good physique, a lot of muscle, needs to have a little bit wider back. But if he shows up really peeled, he could do well too. Got fourth at the North American, so another top five spot for him. But uh, yeah, it was it was an impressive class. You know, we got to see a 21-year-old and Dominic Cardone fighting for a, a top you, spot. That kid was impressive, man. And you know, he was in the middle, and, and they, they kind of shuffled those top three guys in there. You know, in and out. You know, Steve kind of giving each one a, a shot at the limelight. Uh, Cardone at 21 is impressive. Um, you haven't really seen a guy that young, probably since Phil Heath. Uh, came out that that was really dominant and, and even though I wouldn't say he was dominant head and shoulders he's put together 
Uh, would not surprise me if he comes out on top. Tell you what, it'd be nice to get a 21-year-old into the pro ranks. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we, that we have to look at, and I'm sure you've seen this a million times, is 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 he at a point at 21 where are we going to see him grow a lot more, or it's just the start of it? You know, you see guys like Justin Compton, and at 24 when he turned pro, that was impressive. And we've seen what he's been able to do over the last couple of years. He's made size gains by leaps and bounds. But on the flip side of that, we have seen some guys that you know get real big real fast in their early yeah. 20s and then they don't really seem to advance from there so hopefully you know we'll see Dominic put on some more size if he doesn't get a pro card this year come back a little bit bigger next well, I, year I can't imagine he's out of the top two I mean if he doesn't win and I, I can see that I doubt he would be third uh, but let's just go on the limb and say he's going to turn pro um, I can see him getting bigger I can see him being being another uh, um, Jeff Compton type of physique, you know, where all of a sudden next time you see him, he's put on 20 pounds kind of a thing. Uh, but at 21, man, you got nothing but, but time and growing. Yeah. yeah, and he said, you know, he had taken some time off uh, after doing collegiate nationals and two, or team nationals in 2012. Um, you know, and he hasn't, you know, been necessarily in the gym, you know, for two years, solid years. So if he puts the time in in the gym and, you know, just gets right back to it after this show, he's... He's got all the potential in the world. All right, David, moving on to the big boys, the super heavyweights, probably the best super heavyweight class I've seen in, in four or five years now. Uh, this thing was stacked up. Guys were in shape. Um, you could see when they brought up the lineups out there, I mean, you know, the, the whole front rows of both. These guys were in decent shape, finally. You know, we're used to seeing a bunch of, whole bunch of guys that probably should have been heavyweights. Uh, but it seems like there's been a resurgence, in, not only in bodybuilding, but in the bigger guys. This was a good class. Yeah, absolutely it was. And, you know, one thing that... that I think is interesting about this super heavyweight class that I wish you know somebody would have sunk into my head when I was a little bit younger and competing. Russ Allen, he got uh, first place at Junior Nationals, won the super heavies. Uh, he came in weighed 228 pounds. We talked to Russ and he said, you know what? I just wanted to wherever I look my best, whatever I weighed, that's what I was going to go. Whereas a lot of guys probably would have tried to suck down to heavyweights. He just said, where I weigh, I'm going to weigh. And he's you know he's not a short guy. He's probably 5'10", 228. Was in the first call out. So it really goes to show that what what you weigh on a scale that doesn't transfer to you know just being in the top ain't five. no scales on stage brother no you know I mean the rest of the the rest of the supers was good the first call out we had uh, Eddie Brock Montes noticeably better than at the USA's in North America yeah, and, and we talked about Eddie uh, notably at the USA's where he was way off um, he was on point this time um, and I tell you what if he was on if he looked like that at the USA's he, uh, he may have won that class actually uh, all due respect to, to Nick Trigg um, but I tell you what, uh, that kid's good. He's put together, and it was good to see uh, you know him back and forth. Yeah, and it was good to see just a really, really lean super heavyweight. And the rest of the super heavyweights was good too. The guy who got put in the middle, uh, Alexis uh, Rivero Raton. Um, that kid's good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. I mean, they you know they called him in the first call out. They shuffled a few guys around. He ended up in the middle. And that's not a name I'm familiar with. I mean, you know, we, I usually pretty much know some of the supers or the heavies, you know, definitely the, the bigger guys. Um, I get the idea he's from Puerto Rico or, or somewhere because his, his fans or family were right behind me. Sounds like Speedy Gonzalez going off uh, back there. But um, but this kid, I tell you what, I was impressed with this kid. He looked good. He's put together, pretty physique, good muscle, and a better physique when he started posing. Uh, he looked good when he came out. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's very impressive. But the second he hits a shot, stuff starts happening things start lighting up and I tell you what that's a nice mark and you could see him gaining confidence as he was going out um, I got him winning this thing I tell you that right now yeah I think he'll I think he'll definitely walk with the super heavies and I think with his size and his conditioning and everything unless he were to make some major mistakes by tomorrow I think you'll probably see him as your overall winner you know we had, he had some competition there my old buddy Blair Moan so still kicking out the best Blair I've seen probably in the last five years and of course his best has got to be here when he's got some 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 company uh, at this one here, but he's up there fighting for that second spot. Um, he is right on the cusp. Him and Michael Lockett, uh, which we'll get into in a second. A lot of people are going to remember that name. Uh, these guys were battling. I mean, they were, I mean, they were the one guy pretty much got solid. And two and three, I mean, this is huge because that second that second uh, place is a pro card. And for Blair, this is everything. I mean, he's been around 10 years, you know, at the national level. So, you know, he's knocking on the door of my record of 13, uh, you know, trying to get that pro card. But uh, that's going to be a toss-up for the judges. Yeah, Blair's, uh, you know, he's been, like you said, he's been around the national scene for a long time. Uh, and he's always placed pretty well. You know, he's usually in the top five uh, at his lowest, maybe top ten. Uh, but we have seen him his last few outings really off his best. And uh, I saw him at check-ins yesterday. And, you know, even, you know, even with 
all the things that you have to do before check-ins and pre-judging, he still really looked good at check-ins. So I kind of knew, hey, this is a really good version of Blair. Um, Michael Lockett, uh, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I had heard he was going to be here, but, you know, with uh, sure. Lockett's kind it's of like a myth these days, you know, you don't know if they really exist or <laughs> yeah, is Lockett going to be there? But no, he looked really good. He's he looks bigger than he has in the past. You know, there's still that discrepancy in the size of his legs. Uh, his left quad is bigger than his right. He worked a little bit with his posing to try to hide that a little bit. Um, he lacks a little bit in his back shots when he's hitting his rear double bicep and his rear lat spread. He loses a little bit of ground. Uh, Steve Weinberger went right to the side tricep, and any ground that he lost in his back shots, he gained yeah. right. <laughs> he gained right back. So it, it'll be really close between between Blair and and uh, and Michael for second. Um, I you know I, I don't know that it's apples and oranges yeah. with those two's physique and with with Lockett's physique, it's it's almost different from it's it's so different from anybody else. And you know when you see pictures of Michael, and you guys have all seen him before, you know what we're talking about. He's just got a different type of physique. So even though he lacks a few parts, it's still you know, still incredibly impressive. Well, definitely an impressive lineup. Like I say, a much better lineup and better quality here at this show. Um, and this show obviously sporting some some talent out there. My old buddy, The Rock, yes. kicking around down there in the front row. Uh, his trainer, I guess, was in the show. So uh, in the heavyweights, uh, who also looks like he's probably uh, in the top five, uh, maybe in that fourth or fifth spot. But uh, I got a chance to catch up with The Rock a little bit over there. So he's, he's doing good. I'm just stalking. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll, I'll introduce you to him later on, bro, when I, when I catch him. But. Uh, it's always good to catch up with him. Um, also, some bodybuilding star power. I mean, we've got a couple of Mr. Olympias here. Dexter Jackson floating Jay's around. Uh, Jay Cutler. Uh, we, Jay we, Cutler we, we looking, just uh, like Jay, looks like a kid. He, looks <laughs> so, younger. he puts your head on. They, they might think he's you walking yeah, around. You know. I'm not as pretty as Jay is. Yeah. Well, you know who is. But uh, Phil Heath is in the house. Uh, our current and reigning four-time Mr. Olympia. So uh, yeah, we got some. We got some star power, man. Well it's, well, it's nationals, you know. This is this is where Jay got his pro card. Uh, yeah, I think sure. Dexter got it at North Americans, North Americans. but uh, you know, and uh, you know, Phil obviously at the USA's. But uh, you know, this is the biggest NBC show of the year, and you know, Phil's got a supplement company now, and Jay's got his own company. So uh, you know, aside from just you know showing their faces at a, at a big show like this, they're also doing some business stuff. So you know, it's definitely good uh, good to see him here. Well, I've seen the former Mr. Olympia Mark Anthony uh, in the men's physique. Uh, he was kicking around as well. So in, uh, and plenty of ladies, of course. There was. Literally hundreds of them, 300 bikini girls are going to take the stage uh, in just a little bit. Of course, David, I know you'll be front and center for that. Uh, I know, you know, Peter McGuff, our very own, was down there in the uh, pits with you uh, doing the play-by-play. -play. So I'm sure as you guys are uh, watching this here, you guys are keeping tabs on that. God bless Peter, man, because he puts in some time. And our fearless leader, Steve Blackman, is in the house. You know it's truly a great venue and a great uh, uh, you know uh, compliment to the show when Steve Blackman actually makes an appearance yeah you know, one of the things uh, obviously I wouldn't have known about Steve before I started working for MD and you guys think well he's my boss so I'm gonna kiss his butt but but I'm just gonna say it how it is the guy is a huge huge fan of bodybuilding, and, you, and when you think about these magazine companies and stuff like that, and you, you wonder like, are these just businessmen? And this is, you know, this is their, their their chosen venue, and and they're making a run with it, and just, you know, hands off and stuff. But Steve, I mean, he's, you know, he had his list, and he's circling who looks good, and we're going back and forth, you know, about you know who should be where, and uh, you know, the guy really loves bodybuilding, so it's cool to see him he here. He knows physique. I mean, he knows his stuff. I mean, he'll sit there and like a judge. I mean, they'll be, oh, this guy's got this, or that guy ain't got that, or. You know, he's always looking for new talent, but, you know, you talk about people with a passion for bodybuilding, nobody, whether you're a friend or, or not, of uh, uh, Steve Blackman's will ever uh, uh, dispute the fact that <coughs> I got all choked up even just thinking about this. <coughs> he loves bodybuilding. Um, <coughs> need some water over here. We're going to be all right. We're talking about Mr. Olympia. Thanks, man. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, I get choked up when I talk, start talking bodybuilding. But, um... That's the bottom line, bro. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up here. Hopefully, my voice is coming back here. Be this, all right. You know, I'm like I'm like Hogan, man. The hands dropping up one more time, brother. <laughs> the voice never feels. Nice. The, the old where like, the hands drop. Third one's always a turn. The third one stops and starts shaking and comes back. You guys know what we're talking about. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They'll say they don't, but they do. All right, well, David. That's gonna wrap things up here as our uh, pre-judging wrap up is gonna conclude. And of course, uh, we will be back tomorrow. There's a whole nother day. Uh, Pre-judging starting off first thing tomorrow morning. Of course, the finals tomorrow night uh, right on this stage. And, of course, we will be given a uh, wrap-up the, with the winners. We'll see how close we are in our predictions. We may not always be right, David, but we're never wrong.